right, this is called Have You Played Atari? About 12 years ago, my wife and I pulled her original Atari 2600 out of storage and we hooked it up to our television. We set it on the floor next to my Sega Genesis and we showed it to our kids. What's that? Uh, this is how we started playing video games at home when we were kids. Yeah, your uncle and I got this for Christmas in 1977, Anne said. Nolan, who was five at the time, he just turned 20, said, you guys are old. <laughs> you know how kids associate height with age when they're in elementary school? We were getting ready to go to my great aunt's uh, 84th birthday party. And my, my mom says, uh, we're going to go to Aunt Val's birthday party. And Nolan, who was like six at the time, said, oh, how old is she? And my mom says, she's 84. And Nolan goes, she must be tall! <laughs> yeah, we're totally old, I said, not knowing that 10 years later, he and I would have to stop playing Frisbee in front of our house because I hurt my old when I tripped over the curb. <laughs> we looked at the 2600 together. Once shiny silver switches jutted from the top of a black, sleek body that was wrapped in faux wood grain. Black rubber cords snaked around it, ending in the iconic joystick controllers that are woven tightly into the fabric of my youth. The cardboard box, its edges revealing the passage of time as clearly as its contents, sat on the floor beside it. Inside, 20 game cartridges waited, each a key to a time machine. Combat, pitfall, Yars Revenge, Space Invaders, Centipede, Missile Command, Cosmic Arc. I pulled combat out of the box and gently pressed it into the appropriate slot, just like I had probably thousands of times between 1979 and 1985. I felt a surge of excitement well up inside me as I turned on the television and slid a <laughs> tiny black switch from TV to game. <laughs> just turning on the PS3 or the Xbox or the Wii. It's not the same as taking that switch and looking at that switch and going, I'm turning you from a television into a game. <laughs> I should have predicted the response I got from both of my kids. They grew up in a world where Genesis was state of the art, and my original Game Boy was lame because it wasn't in color and weighed too much. <laughs> He looked at the screen as a cycle through colors that even in the 70s weren't exactly attractive. I flashed what I hoped was an enigmatic smile at him as I dramatically prepared to blow his seven-year-old mind. I held a joystick in one hand, enjoying the familiarity as it settled into my palm, and I grabbed the game reset switch and gently pulled it down. The familiar sound of tank engines rumbled into life and I was shot through time to the shag carpeted, wood paneled living room of the house I grew up in, playing against my younger brother on our black and white television set. I prepared, I prepared myself for a trip through the wormhole to nostalgia town, but before I could get swept away, I was jarred back into the present by the equally familiar sound of a tank firing its cannon and blasting its opponent. I looked up at the screen and saw my tank spinning against the wall. I glanced to one side and saw that Nolan had picked up one of the controllers and was grinning. <laughs> okay, so you push up to... He shot me again. <laughs> my tank spun around and he began to giggle. All right, okay, you know, just give me a chance to show. He shot me a third time. <laughs> okay, I said, it's on. <laughs> For the next half hour or so, we blasted each other in all the permutations of tank combat from an empty field with straight shots to my personal favorite, invisible tank bomb with maximum walls. <laughs> we tried airplane combat, but my kids grew tired of that variation as quickly as I did when I was slightly older than they were. When we finished playing combat, we moved to some of the other games in the box. Without any assistance from me, both my kids figured out Missile Command, Space Invaders, Air Sea Battle, Pitfall. In fact, the only game that gave them real trouble was Raiders of the Lost Ark, a game that I don't think I ever beat when I was a kid, of the few Atari 2600 titles which I recall needing the manual to fully understand. <laughs> Thankfully for us all, the nearest copy of E.T. was in a landfill in Arizona. <laughs> After I wrote this, um, uh, a guy that reads my blog sent me an email about how, because uh, I said when I, when I quoted this on my blog, I said, so I'm thinking that I might like fire up E.T. on an emulator and see if it's, if it's really as appalling as I remember. <laughs> And uh, this guy emailed me and he said, you know, I, I have an emulator. I thought this would be fun, so I, 
I, I loaded it up to, to see, and it's quite possibly the worst game ever designed. So it's, it's just awful. And I, I gave it to my daughter, who was the age that, that you know kids were when this game came out, came out to you know show her and maybe see if well maybe because I'm an adult my brain works better for me or whatever. And uh, he said that she got so angry at the game when she was like seven or something uh, that she just gave up on on, on, on playing it. Uh, for the next several weeks, my wife and I noticed that the very small video game time budget we gave the kids when they were little was invested almost exclusively into Atari games, while that state-of-the-art Sega Genesis sat unused in the cabinet beneath our television set. Why do you think the kids like playing Atari so much? I asked her one night after they'd gone through it. I mean, besides it being awesome. <laughs> I think the simplicity of the whole thing makes the games more accessible to the kids. Remember when we were kids, how we used our imagination to add details to the games? Remember how easy it was to just start playing and figure it out in a couple of minutes? No, I think they're doing the same thing. I agree with her. The 2600, with its simple eight-direction joystick and eight-bit graphics, was easy for our kids, who were five and seven, to pick up and start playing immediately. After a while, they couldn't compete with the console system their friends had, and they eventually lost interest. We kept the 2600 in the house, long enough for me to rack up high scores on Pitfall that I never would have been able to achieve when I was 10. I told them it would have been a pitfall Harry's Adventure Club. And for Anne to eliminate any doubts about her ability to utterly destroy anyone who was foolish enough to challenge her in Air Sea Battle. We eventually put the 2600 back into the garage where it still lives, on a shelf next to an Atari 800 and a TI 994A, the very first computer I ever programmed on. I kept them because understanding our past is fundamental to understanding. Who am I kidding? I kept them because I love them. <laughs> That's the only reason I did. The end. within. That's when the dragon showed up. 
What the hell is that? <laughs> That's the dragon. Of course, I said, holding the joystick out in front of me like I always did, convinced that if I moved the joystick around, it would help me escape the dragon faster. <laughs> That's when the dragon ate me. <laughs> so, you guys did this for fun? <laughs> well, there was this. And then we'd occasionally fend off Indian attacks when we weren't dinosaurizing our caves, yes. <laughs> he laughed. What other games are on this? I showed him Yars Revenge. This was my favorite 2600 game when I was a kid. I liked this game even more than Pitfall. <laughs> he looked at me. I like Pitfall a lot. He continued to look at me. We all liked Pitfall a lot. <sighs> okay, so you're this insect creature called the Yar. I said as the game began. And this guy over here, he's the co tile. He destroyed your home planet, and you built this, the Zorlon cannon, to extract the titular revenge. I flew around the scene through the neutral zone and chipped away at the co tile defenses. My Zorlon cannon activated, and I waited to take my shot. From time to time, the Zorlon turns into a squirrel and shoots itself at you. That's when the quote turned into a squirrel, and I blasted it out of the sky. Yes! I looked at him, ready to bask in his approval. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, you have to fly around in this cool little screen between levels, I said. Oh, and the second level has a rotating shield. He looked at the flashing graphics on the screen and scratched his chin. How many people got seizures from this when you played? <laughs> So I shoot this thing that looks like a distress signal? The quotile. Yes, you shoot the quotile with your sore alarm cannon. Because you are there to extract right revenge. I got that one. I watched with more pride than I thought possible or revealed to my easily embarrassed teenage son, as it took him about two minutes to do exactly what he said he'd do. Does this game ever get hard? He said. That's what she said! <laughs> Did I tell you that? You are so 